What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Behind the Counter Show. I am Vince, and I am here today with John, my father, and our compounding pharmacist here at HB Pharmacy. And we are talking, much like everyone else is, yet again, about LDN. It seems like we can't get away from LDN these days. It's, uh, you know, it's definitely in the news a lot, and uh, we're seeing more and more uh, uses for a variety of autoimmune conditions. And uh, it's exciting because there are, are certainly a lot of... Uh, uh, benefits and it's, so it's definitely a topic worth talking about. Definitely, definitely. We have been talking about it a lot, but honestly, I've had friends talk to me about it who know nothing about pharmacy, and I'm so used to compounding under that umbrella, LDN, you know, that this whole segment of pharmacy being kind of something that few people know about, not a lot of people know about, and all of a sudden everyone seems to be talking about LDN. Right, and so, you know, and people are not even sure exactly what that means and what's low dose naltrexone. They know about naltrexone. That's used uh, commercially uh, for uh, to help people to stop uh, drinking when they're uh, alcoholism and sure. some uh, to block uh, some uh, euphoric effects from alcohol or opiates. So that's the, you know those are doses 50 to 150 milligrams per day. Low dose though is more like anything 10 milligrams or daily or less. And there's even a commercially available product called Contrave, which is for weight loss. It has other things besides LDN in it, but um, that's that's an example of something where you're starting off and it's it's a 10 milligrams. Uh, Definitely. So that's a good quick summary of what LDN is exactly. Now, this video is going to focus on side effects. However, we have done a few other videos, one about the general benefits, another about titration and dosing, and a third even about long COVID specifically, and a study that came out that has shown some possible benefits of using LDN in that case. But today, we're going to focus on specifically side effects. Those other videos will link in the caption here too, if you want to check them out. So actually, before we jump into side effects, Let's start with contraindications and interactions. Are there any kind of contraindications? Or yeah, interactions a few. We're sure, talking? sure. I mean, uh, intuitively, you have to understand since it worked initially to uh, you know block the effects of alcohol and opiates, uh, the, the that type of thing. It's contraindicated. The to positive take, effects of alcohol and right, opiates, right? Right. Yeah, like the yeah. euphoria and stuff like that. Uh, so you would want to you'd positive, but yeah, sure. positive. Right. right. <laughs> so. The thing is that, you know, if you're on, uh, you had just had surgery and you, the doctor prescribed something for you, um, you know, you probably wouldn't want to be on naltrexone when you needed something if you were in severe pain. Okay. So that would be something that I would, uh, you know, be concerned about. Um, you know, otherwise contraindications, you know, it wasn't, it hasn't been studied a lot in pregnancy because originally naltrexone was used, uh, again, f for people to help them stop drinking or taking some of the certain opiates and stuff like that. And typically, uh, you know, when women are pregnant, they're trying not to drink or to take too much medicine at all. Sure. So you don't have, uh, you know, a, a lot of uh, information on that. So it's not generally used in pregnant women, except for maybe if you have um, Hashimoto's, which is... Um, an autoimmune disease disease where you know your body attacks its thi your own thyroid. So you, in that case, that's one maybe one of the f few times you may want to continue your LDN therapy. You know. Interesting. Okay. So those are contraindications and interactions. Now let's get into the side effects specifically. In some of our other videos, you mentioned that generally well tolerated overall good safety profile. There have to be some side effects, though. So can you get into some more specific details on that? Yeah, sure. I, again, it's very well tolerated generally, but it's, uh, you know, you're, you're, we commonly get a little bit of a drowsiness. We get uh, a vivid or very colorful dreams and um, you know, then uh, dry mouth, severe okay. dry mouth. So those are the, those are the most common ones. Um, but if, if you, um, working with your practitioner and your compounding pharmacist, understand how you have to titrate up so you go slowly and you're not just at a race to get to that 4.5 milligram t uh, target dose. Uh, usually you can mitigate a lot of those side effects. Okay. Well, that's good to know. That's good to know. And so just to clarify too, you're saying that these side effects are strong enough that it may cause someone to terminate their treatment using LDN. Right, and then that would be unfortunate because there are so many benefits, and typically, uh, particularly if you if you give it a sufficient amount of time, you know, you start realizing those benefits. So I, you know, I, I hate to see somebody uh, trying to get up to a higher dose because more is always better in people's minds, unfortunately, and it's well, definitely not true. It's the way of the world these right? days. Right. <laughs> so, um, but if you do, you know, different things to um, to to take take your time. Uh, to titrate up slowly, you tend to, to not run into those problems as much. Okay, so let's say then that someone is titrating up slowly 
and they are working with their physician, which, by the way, we encourage everyone who's taking LDN, interested in taking LDN to do. This video is for informational purposes, and hopefully we'll be able to give you some questions or ideas that you can then use as information to advocate for yourself and cover with your own practitioner when you're having these conversations yourself in, sure. the, in the doctor's office. But let's say you are working with a doctor and you are going low and slow, and you're still experiencing some of these side effects. What would you recommend then? Uh, I have some uh, different ideas that we, we when we work with people, um, you know, if, if necessary. For example, usually we we dose uh, naltrexone at bedtime, so okay. uh, you know, sometime between nine uh, p.m. and two a.m. Technically, is what's in the, in the uh, literature. But uh, if if that's causing too much disruption in your sleep, for example. You know, sometimes um, we, we switch the person to a morning dose, for example, oh, to just to see how they... Despite the potential drowsiness, I guess yeah, you would see... Everybody's, that, yeah, yeah. And, and sometimes, again, with the that drowsiness, when somebody's been on it for a couple of weeks, that tends to dissipate and they get okay. used to it. So, you know, you could try to do a, a morning dose and see how uh, that works. The other way you can work that around, and, and again, this is why it's so important to collaborate with your practitioner and your pharmacist. We need your feedback. We want to know how you're feeling and how you're doing. But sometimes we'll do uh, things like split the dose up. So instead of doing, you know, all of the dose at bedtime or all of the dose in the morning, you know, we'll do a morning and an evening dose, you know, like first thing in the morning and then maybe around dinner time, that type of thing. Or, or you know, so, uh, you know, we can w work around, uh, you, you know, the issues as long as we're all communicating and know what the challenge is, you know, we can work around Interesting. that. Interesting. That's cool. I mean, that really is the whole what's the right word here? Ethos or whole benefit, I guess, or the whole value and point behind compounding pharmacy to begin with is that it's supposed to be individualized and working with your doctor, pharmacist, and patient, right? So right. It's very personalized. And that's figuring out your specific dosing protocol is uh, pretty, I mean, it's a little uncommon in commercial pharmacy, at least, you know, not that it doesn't exist. It does happen, but it's a lot more infrequent, I guess, you know? Yeah. And, but, it, and, you know, particularly because, you know, there are, are, you know, depending on, you know, where you're reading, you know, uh, over 100, 150 different autoimmune diseases that are out there. And so LDN is being studied in all of them. Uh, and you have to understand that just like with other, with other types of disease states, uh, you know, every disease doesn't get treated with the same amount of milligrams of a particular medication. Sure, so uh, you, you really need to really individualize why you're taking and understand why you're taking the LDN and, and see how you want to do it there, you know? Yeah, that makes sense. Now, and again, I, when I've mentioned this on other times too, uh, it helps a lot if you can track the symptoms, the symptoms, you know, of I anything that you're doing. If you're feeling better, if you're feeling worse, if you're feeling uh, uh, tired, uh, you know, too many uh, vivid dreams, all those things. And, you know, we've mentioned it in other uh, videos. The, yes, uh, in the, the titration video, we included a few links to a tracking app, I believe, and a yeah. tracker PDF that you can download if you're interested. So yes, exactly. definitely yeah. check out that video on dosing titration and how to dose as well. So... What about, are there any situations in which, so someone's experiencing symptoms, maybe autoimmune, otherwise, whatever the condition might be, is there ever a situation where someone's symptoms may get worse after they take LDN? You, you, you know, I'm, I'm, in my experience, and um, you, you would wonder why that's happening, but I have seen that. And I think that um, when I see that, a red flag goes up to me um, and... If, if you're seeing that, that means that you got, I think that you're taking too much. Okay. So typically when your symptoms are going to get worse that quickly right away, um, you're, you're probably taking too much and you need to dial back down and maybe just start right from fresh, you know? Interesting. So that kind of is another reason. I mean, we're talking about, you know, reducing side effects and that's why you might want to go low and slow. But if you go too quickly and jump over what your ideal dose is, then you're actually going to start to... Um, have some negative consequences. Right, because there are a lot of different receptors that these types of medications work on. And again, we discussed there are different kinds of disease states that you may be treating. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, you need to keep that in mind and the bo body reacts differently to all that. And, and if you're uh, not feeling well, we need the feedback. That's why it's good to track that kind of stuff. That's why it's important to talk to the pharmacist and practitioner and make sure that um, if your symptoms are getting worse, in that case, I'd say you're, that, that it's possible that the dose is too high. Sure. It certainly has to be considered. Okay, interesting. And I guess you made to your point too, it, it depends on your disease state, right? So this is all still kind of in flux and being studied. And it's not only is it in flux and being studied, it's also something that's going to vary person to person and disease to disease. So sure. it really takes a lot of 
fine tuning and communication, I guess, is the, the no. It's point it, yeah, that's very that's right. And uh, it, you know, well, the more we all communicate, and uh, especially with this type of specialized medicine, the, the better off the outcome will be for sure. Sure. Yeah. Now, with said fine tuning and communication in particular, you know, it's unfortunate to say, but in this day and age, sometimes communicating practitioner is a little bit of an oxymoron, you know? I mean, if it's your your regular doctor or someone you see, maybe they're just getting so bombarded and they're dealing with a lot of the similar problems we are with insurance companies and blah, 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 and reimbursements, different issues there. You know, not everyone's provider has the time that's required to really have a conversation about this kind of stuff. So whether it's your pharmacist, whether it's your doctor or both, you know, obviously both are needed in this situation, having a good relationship and having someone who's willing to take that extra time really is important then, I guess, right? No, it absolutely is. And so if you're having, and let's listen, listen, your practitioners are definitely overwhelmed and uh, understandably so, but if you're working well with your pharmacist, uh, then, you know, that person, you know, uh, can help advocate to the physician and say, you know, I'm, I've been speaking to uh, patient XYZ and, and they're feeling it this way. And, uh, you know, what do you think? And maybe these are some of my suggestions. What do you want to do with this patient? You know, and, and we can go from there. So, you, you know, you have to, the pharmacist can have a key role in conveying some of the problems that the patient's having, you know? Sure. Now, with a lot of things that are trendy as well, you start seeing people that are, I don't necessarily want to say bad actors, but maybe doing things or in business for the wrong reasons. You know, like we're in healthcare. Of course, healthcare is a business, but at the end of the day, we're here to help people and help patients, and that's that's the priority, right? But sure. and we've not I've not seen this in LBN, but in other areas, whether it's, you know, most commonly right now, probably the GLP ones and, you know, compounding for weight loss, semaglutide, that kind of stuff, you see a lot of compounding pharmacies start popping up making these things that are not necessarily adhering to the strictest of quality control protocols, right? So to no, that it's, point, it's, it's not just someone who you think you have a good relationship with and want to communicate with. It's mm -hmm. someone who is also, as a, a business in a lab, they are doing things the right way to ensure safety as a, as a paramount concern. Right. You know, and it's it's true. Uh, it's a wild, wild west with the people say with the, some of these uh, GLP-1s especially. We're seeing a lot of issues with the uh, quality and, and, and the... Uh, so... But just like anything else, you want to be careful uh, when you're picking your practitioner. You want to be careful what uh, compounding pharmacy you go to. It tends to be, as with usual, you know, most of us out there are trying to do the right thing and are doing the right thing. Uh, but, you know, the people that get the attention, unfortunately, are the few bad actors. Yeah. So um, when you're doing, um, you could be you know, trying LDN and maybe you're not going to a pharmacy that uses a, a high quality uh, a, a source for naltrexone, right? Sure, that sure. could be a problem. Um, you also might be sensitive to a variety of fillers. We have, a, um, a, you know, an ability to switch out and, and uh, change those things if a person's having some kind of uh, an issue with, yeah, yeah, or, or just, yeah. and it's just not working. So there are ways to tweak it, even though the strength may not be the issue, it may be some of the excipients. So you want to choose a pharmacy um, that is going to be uh, attentive to those uh, types of uh, needs and feedback from you. You want to make sure that they have... Uh, you know, uh, uh, solid uh, procedures in place to take care of and to compound things. You want to make sure um, they have quality co control uh, processes in place too to make sure that they're they're producing uh, quality compounds. Yeah, definitely. And again, a lot of this, and honestly, the whole purpose of the behind the counter show to begin with, even is informational. We want patients in this day and age. Patients are their own best advocate, right? So we want to arm you with information to take this information and take some of these questions. And then whether you're talking to your doctor, whether you're talking to your compounding pharmacy, whether you're talking to your retail pharmacy, whatever it is, that you'll be able to advocate for yourself better and kind of know some of these things that are happening behind the scenes, or at least some layman's terms on what some of these drugs or hot topics or things going on. Sure, sure. So to that point, is there anything else you want to add before we wrap up here on the uh, side effects for LDN? Yes, absolutely. I think that, uh, you know, as I you know said at the outset, it's very well tolerated medication and, you know, with minimal side effects. But, um, you know, it's... Um, it shouldn't be considered a panacea. Um, I think it's exciting, and it's being uh, the, it's con that's it's continuing to evolve, and we're learning more and more. And I think it's going to uh, be a, a great tool to have in the toolbox, like I like to say. But it's part of 
the whole uh, a treatment plan and you should never really look at it as I'm just going to take this LDN and you know and not do all the other things that you need to like for if you're fighting an autoimmune disease then you know uh, you should be doing all the other things that you know what other other supplements may be appropriate in that case watching making your diet making stuff, making yeah. sure you're watching your diet you know, minimizing the alcohol intake you know uh, making sure you're getting the proper rest so it's a complete uh, treatment plan it's not just Okay, I'm going to take LDN and I don't have to worry about anything else. Right, right. But again, like as you said earlier, you know, it's this is a, a, a conversation you need to have with your practitioner uh, and a and a good compounding pharmacist. And you know, uh, we're, we're at HB Pharmacy. We're always here to answer your questions. Uh, happy to talk to you either on the phone or via email. So please consider reaching out to us if you do have any questions. And we thank you again for watching our video. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, everyone. See you in the next one.